Hello, my name is Mr. Bryson with Susquehanna Valley High School here in Conklin, New York. The zip code is 13778. If you have any questions, just ask. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the third day of lessons in Unit 4 for Common Core Algebra 2. This is the non-region section. If you don't understand what I'm saying, there's a QR code right there, and you can watch the person who actually made these worksheets. You studied exponential functions extensively in Common Core Algebra 1, which usually is ninth grade. Today's lesson will review many of the basic components of the graphs and the behaviors. Exponential functions whose exponents are variables are extremely important in mathematics, science, and engineering. Okay, so this is the basic exponential function. You notice that we have the base raised to the variable. The base is going to be a constant. The variable x, the exponent, is going to be what's going to be changing. So here, we notice the base is 2. So this is saying, what is 2 to the negative third? Well, remember, that is 1 over 2 cubed, and 2 cubed is 8. So that's 1 over 8. I'm going to fill these in quickly. That's 1 fourth. That is just uh, one half. Almost got that wrong. Had to check it three times mentally. Anything to the zero power is zero. And then two to the first is two. Two squared is four. Two cubed is eight. So this is two. to the negative two power, just in case you were wondering where that came from. Okay. Fill in the table below without using your calculator. I did it mentally. And then sketch, sketch. It doesn't mean exactly on the grid provided. Okay, so we notice that we have, oh, wow. Did I get that wrong? E -e 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 -e. Anything to the zero power is one. I hope I said that. Maybe I wrote down zero by accident. So we notice that we have the point zero in the X direction, one, in the y direction. And then I'm going to plot 1, 2. And then I'm going to plot 2, 4. And then 3, 8. Now here's the tricky one. Negative 1, a half. Negative 2, a quarter. Negative 3, an Eight. I'm never going to touch the x-axis. That's the beauty of an exponential function. An exponential function, we'll remember from ninth grade, will have a horizontal asymptote. This horizontal asymptote is at the x-axis because it doesn't say it doesn't say y equals two to the x plus eight. It says plus zero because there's nothing there. So that's why the horizontal asymptote is at zero. Let's label it. Y equals two to the X. Now consider the function Y equals one half to the X. Using your calculator to help you, cheater. Fill out the table below and sketch the graph. Okay, so if you want to use your calculator, you can always hit the Y equals. Type that into... Uh, the calculator, take a look at the table and get the answers. Eight, four, two, one, two, sorry, one half, one fourth, one eighth. Okay, I did those from memory. Now let's see if I can do it explaining. So this is saying, one half to the negative three. Remember the product rule. So it's one to the negative three, two to the negative three. Hmm. So these negatives on the exponents, I told you in class and I probably told you in a recording that means bring them to the opposite side of the fraction bar. So it's two cubed over one cubed. Well, we all know that one cubed is just one and two cubed is eight. So that's how I got that number right there. Rewind it, listen to that one more time if it's confusing. 
Now let's try plotting these. Negative three, eight. Negative two, four. Negative one, two. Zero, one. If the exponential function does not have a plus something, it'll always cross through the point zero, one. Because remember, anything to zero power equals one. So now it's one and a half, two and a quarter, three and an eighth. I'm going to draw it this way. It's easier for me to do a horizontal asymptote when it's going in an increasing direction. Great. Y equals one half to the X. So if we take a look at these two graphs, if we drew them on the same piece of graph paper, don't draw this. If we drew them on the same piece of graph paper, it would look like that. That's a horrible drawing, but you'll notice that it's reflected across the y-axis. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the next page. Based on the graphs and behavior saw in exercise one and two, state the domain and range. Okay, was there any number that we couldn't put in domain? Remember, domain is the x values. Was there any number that we couldn't put in? Absolutely not. So the domain is all the way from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. So the range, what comes out the y values? I told you there was a horizontal asymptote at zero. It never reaches zero, but it gets really, really close to zero. And then it shoots up. It shoots up to positive infinity. And since it never gets to that number, that's why we use a parenthesis. Since it never gets to zero, that's why we use a parenthesis instead of a bracket. If it was exactly at that number, if it was exactly at a number, we use a bracket. If it is not exactly at that number, we use a parenthesis because it just gets close to it. Our exponential functions one to one. Yes. How can you tell? Well, first of all, it has to be a function. We know it's a function. Okay, so since it's a function, it passes the vertical line test. Now, how is it one to one? Oh, it also passes the horizontal line test. We already know what the vertical and horizontal line tests are. If you need a, your memory refreshed, just ask me in class. Now consider the function y equals 7 times 3 to the x. Wow, that's going to shoot up fast. Determine the y-intercept of this function algebraically. Let me see, y-intercept, y-intercept. The y-intercept is going to be somewhere here. Let's just say it's right there. Well, what do we know about it? Think, 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 think. Durr. We know that x is 0. So all we have to do is plug in a 0 for the x. Determine the y-intercept of this function algebraically and justify your answer. Get rid of that highlighter. 7 times 3 to the 0 equals 7 times 1 because anything to the 0 power is 1. So that's 7. So that gives us a situation. Remember I, when I said pluses? It also gives a situation when we have something in front of the b. This is the b. That's the a number. Got it? I wonder what the c number is. No. Plus c. So let's write a better form of the equation. y equals a b to the x plus c. That moves it up and down. That moves the y-intercept up and down. It also makes it uh, the slope faster, accelerate faster. OK. Does the exponential function increase or decrease? Uh, it is increasing Do you remember from eighth grade why we knew it was increasing? It's increasing because 
B is greater than 1. The base is greater than 1. Create a rough sketch of this function, labeling its y-intercept. Okay, we said the y-intercept was 7. I'm going to move that down. That's 7. It's increasing. There we go. Consider the function y equals one third x, uh, one third to the x power plus four. How does this function's graph compare that to this one right here? Oh, the y-intercept is up four. What does adding four to this function do? Shifts up four units. Determine this graph's y-intercept algebraically. One third to the zero plus four. One plus four is five. Create a rough sketch of this function, labeling its y-intercept. We said the y-intercept was five. There it is, five. It is increasing or decreasing. It is decreasing because this is less than one. Uh, y equals one third to the x plus four. Whew. There we go. Homework page. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do the next two pages for homework. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class. Have a great day.